Hello guys, this is the second day on our new New England road trip and we're on the border between upstate New York, New York basically, and Vermont. And it's such a pity, we walked through the forest yesterday looking for compositions, we walked through all sorts of stuff, we walked up an entire mountain yesterday and lo and behold we find these colors on what's perhaps the busiest road between New York and Vermont. And uh, we were actually the first ones to spot this composition, but a lot of people started showing up, weirdly enough. And now it's getting kind of crowded, so we're heading out. Just a pity. Sometimes you just find the best composition around the road. Unfortunately. This right behind me, guys, is the Washington Monument. No, I'm just kidding. It is the Bennington War Monument, and it was built in 1889 for in in, mem in memory of the Battle of Bennington, which happened in 1777, right here. And it was one of the crucial battles of the American Revolution because America did not cede New England to the British so it was it's quite a spectacular structure because it's the highest point in Vermont and once you go up there you don't have to hike but you get some tremendous views of this area and the obelisk itself is just right now in the evening or the afternoon sun just looks terrific and he's still photographing it and if you look at that tree right behind it I took a picture the tree hiding right behind this immense structure uh, a while back. It's just magical time of year to be here. It's like 75 degrees, I think. And uh, yeah, Vermont so far has been terrific and we just entered it. So that's saying a lot. Bennington Battle Monument is a must-do on any New England road trip. It costs about $5 to get to the top of the monument and the views outside are absolutely stunning. So how would you describe your experience up at the top of the monument? It was gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. How many compositions do you think were up there? Well, when you're up high, usually you have a lot, a lot of choice. But um, 
It depends, really. Uh, I'd say there are at least like three or four good ones. Yeah. Uh, but they're kind of similar. There's yeah. Some light and everything. I think the standout one was the house one, right? The house and um, the church sort of structure. Um, Which is somewhere over there. Yeah, somewhere north. Yeah. Some of our best fall <laughs> pictures, right? <laughs> Yeah. Anyway guys, uh, we are at this stream in Vermont, right next to the town of Bennington. Um, I think it's called the Long Trail, uh, Long Trailhead. It's the uh, beginning of the Long Trail and at the Long Hill, Long Trail Trailhead. Man, I cannot speak English today. And um, basically, we, we did not have a way to get down here, so we just kind of scrambled over rocks we skipped over some streams and then we quite irresponsibly got here so kids don't do this at home but as you can see the fall colors are in full bloom here in Vermont as we saw earlier at the monument and uh, now we're trying to get some more landscape style or intimate scene style photos and we you guys all know I've always said this he is the master of the intimate scene. <clears throat> so uh, I think while he takes that shot, I'm just gonna keep walking down because uh, he's pretty much got that area covered and he's kind of blocking the composition. So I'm just gonna move down and uh, take my photo a little further up stream right here. I think that would be upstream, this would be downstream. I'm sure you guys can see the flow of water. All right, let's keep moving. I had to wait a good 30 minutes for my cousin to move out of the way to get my shot of the stream. Luckily, I found a red maple leaf strewn on some rocks nearby, and that made for a beautiful foreground for this image. This is where we started to make some sketchy decisions. 
We waited further down the stream hoping that there would be better compositions and better light. But that never happened. Instead we just basically wasted a good four hours just wandering around the creek and getting our shoes wet, nearly slipping on a bunch of rocks and uh, kids don't do this at home. By the time we finally made it back to the car, it was almost sunset and lo and behold, all the hotels are booked up in Vermont this time of year, so we had to hightail it back to New York for the night and along the way the light was phenomenal. We didn't have a shot at making much videos here because of the short period of time, but I did manage to get this image of a lake right in between Vermont and upstate New York. Day three of our adventure started off with us driving back south to New Jersey. Instead of taking the highway, we decided to take the scenic route on some local roads. Along the way, we came upon a patch of forest, which was in peak color. We had to make a stop here, even if it was just a quick stop. The hike to Catterskill Falls is an uphill climb for the most part. It can be very busy in the fall because of how accessible it is to the main road. But even though it's a difficult climb for some, standing un underneath the falls is a worthwhile experience. I also got one of my best shots of all time right under there. separate yourself from the crowds, climb on further up the hill where there is some stunning woodland which looks like a scene straight out of Lothlorien. Sorry guys, I didn't really get to film much because it's straight up here at Catterskill Street State Park. Catterskill, Cat, Catskill State Park and we're at the Catskill Falls Trail which leads to Inspiration Point which is a hill and Man, I ended up in this awesome peak fall colors and woodland scene. Look at those heathers at the bottom, and then you have the red leaves, you have the green moss in the middle, and uh, I think this might be my favorite shot of the trip because, well, it's a little unique, I would say, to me. So, Taking this image, I'm sorry we haven't filmed much. We're on our way to back to New Jersey, but we decided to stop at Catters Catskills State Park, not Catterskill, Caterpillar or Catterskills. Anyway, let's work this composition, get it right. You gotta focus tech here because there's so many layers of detail and everything. Uh, let me get to it because the sun is going to interfere with this composition in a little while. Get back, getting back to it. <laughs>
you can see everywhere around me there are leaves that have just fallen from the wind and they continue to fall and make this place really magical. <sighs> Man. I was enjoying my hike so much that I didn't take any video after the picture. I kid you guys. Um, <laughs> actually, I was huffing and puffing. I thought my cousin went up the mountain and I decided to go up the mountain and turns out he was not up the mountain. And here I am, um, coming back from down from the mountain. It was kind of weird talking because there's one other person up there. Still not that comfortable vlogging in front of strangers, especially one stranger. More than one for somehow makes me feel more comfortable. But uh, it's just a magical time right now, and the light's not perfect right now because it's overhead. But as it shifts, I think it'll get better. This was the point where I took that picture um, as I was coming up. And man, it was just awesome. One of my favorite pictures of the trip. And uh, inspiration point, the final, or not the final, but the highest point of this hike is inspirational, but... I think I arrived at the wrong time. Unless you camp up there, you're not gonna get the ideal light for those images. And some, for some reason, my telephoto has not been focusing at all. Despite no physical damage and no usage, so I didn't get the picture I wanted up there, but I just enjoyed it. I whipped out my laptop and worked a little. But, uh, Anyway, I think that was work calling, and this will be the end of this short but sweet adventure. I think I've hit, at the start of this trip, I made a list of all the things I wanted to do. Waterfalls, wooded shots, cascades, creeks, I think we've done them all, drives. So it's finally time to head back to civilization. Alright, bye bye. My finally getting cell phone signal up there made us realize just how much we had lost touch with time. We had to literally drag ourselves away from the area and start our journey south before I missed my flight. I dropped my cousin off back in his home in New Jersey and hopped on a flight back to Texas at Philly Airport. This was a beautiful end to a long weekend out in New England. Little did we know, as I said before, that we wouldn't be repeating the trip in 2020. Well, welcome to Dallas Fort Worth. Hopefully we will in 2021. Thanks for watching guys and uh, please hit that subscribe button and the like button if you like the content on this channel. And of course uh, leave a comment below.